And the cliffs of Moer are gorgeous, it's like majestic. I look out and we, we start walking and I just stop. It's a breathtaking view anyways. Nowhere near the beach, no waves to be had. Like we're just on the cliffs, on the edges of Ireland. So this is like a moment between me and God. And he just said, I love you more than all of this and you're missing it. This is Touched by Heaven, everyday encounters with God. Those moments when heaven and earth collide. Today, the voice of an angel. We have another car driving right through a person. Divine interventions, divine providence, we have, we have, oh, we culminate on a mountaintop with a surfer. What's a surfer doing on a mountaintop? Well, we're, we're going to get to that too. But this message that uh, he delivers to the surfer girl is so profound that we all, maybe we've never heard this message quite this way, and we need to. I, I need to. So that is where we're headed to the mountaintop. We are on this wave, this wave of miracles. Think about it. Oh, by the way, hi, welcome. It's episode 227. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. Every day, there are millions of miracles that come crashing like waves into our lives. Wasn't that poetic? I thought so. Thanks, Trevor. You're welcome. So we're just going to take one of these waves. It's just this one little wave with a handful of people and their miraculous stories, okay? And all the stories actually connect. And we're going to start in Wisconsin, and we're going to jump into the car of Chaplain Rick, because this is our first mode of transportation to get up to that mountaintop, okay? Chaplain Rick used to do a lot of prison ministry. He's had a lot of miraculous things happen along the way. He's put it in a book called Life of Miracles. This is one of those stories. He's headed to a Bible study with a bunch of guys in the car, okay? And Chaplain Rick was one of these guys who once upon a time drove, you've seen these drivers that when they're talking to the guys in the back, they literally turn their heads around to talk to the people in the back. Yeah, Rick used to do that. And as I'm driving, this is the bizarre part. As I'm driving, you know, I'm really young and not a very smart young man. I'm doing 55 miles an hour on the highway going to this guy's house. And I keep looking behind me, talking to the two guys in the back seat. Always looking back, never paying attention to what's in front of me most of the time. And all of a sudden, they, they yelled out to me when I was looking back one more time. And they said, watch out. And I turned my face around in front. And guess what? There was this young man, maybe 13 years old, on a 10-speed bike, 10-speed right in front of my car. And I'm at 55 miles an hour, and he was maybe two, three feet away. I just cried out, Jesus, help us. I jammed on the brakes, closed my eyes, because I didn't want to see the impact. And I said, Urgh! and finally the car stopped, right? And, he, and the guys are going, he's gone. He's gone. What do you mean he's gone? He can't be gone. I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hit nothing. I didn't feel nothing. He said, no, he disappeared. You know, no one's seen anybody on the side of the road, on the right or left in front of us. He literally is gone, and we're thinking, where did he go? So then this is the weird thing is I look at my rear real mirror. And guess what? This kid's behind the car, in the middle of the car, as if he went through me. And I said, that's impossible. How could he be behind my car, center of, the, of my car, behind my car? So I get out of the car. Hey, kid, you okay? And he's all shocked. Like you saw a ghost. So I said, what's wrong? And he couldn't talk. I said, what happened? Did I, uh, and he shrugs his shoulders like he couldn't explain it. I said, well, he says, can I go? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm glad you're okay, kid. And he takes off, you know. But he he thought he probably should have got hit. I thought I should have hit him. How do you explain that? How did he get from the front of my car, behind my car, and I, I never hit him? And Well, uh, we have lots car, of episodes where people have cars that drove through cars, motorcycles, through semis. We yeah. have uh, everything and anything and anything and everything in that area because if God doesn't want it, it doesn't happen. And that's exactly what happened. And I was grateful. Don't get me wrong. I was yeah. still thinking. Definitely gratitude, yeah. And that 13-year-old boy, can you imagine? He's still telling that story today, too. I don't know how it happened. This guy, can, you know. Yet one more story to add to the collection of that that kind of story. Um, tell you what, let's follow the 13-year-old, uh, uh, because th these stories connect. We're on this miraculous wave, and these stories connect. So we're going to get on the bike with this, I'll ride in the basket, uh, of this 13-year-old boy, because he's going to take us over to a 13-year-old girl. Lisa, back when she was 13 years old, she's leaving school, hopping on the bus. School was out, and I made my way, climbed aboard the bus, and found my seat. Oh, lucky me, I got not only my own little bench, but I was next to the window. Yes. This would be the first time that Lisa would hear the voice. And this is a love story. Shall we start with that one? Yeah. We have a bus driver. Her name 
was Miss May. And um, I am sitting there and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and waiting when out of the corner of my eye comes the tall, lanky, blonde boy that rides with me. He's one stop after mine. And I, my mind starts to chatter. Come on, bud, let's pick it up. Uh, you know, I'm hungry. I want to go home. He approaches the bus, but stops short of the steps to climb aboard. And I tilted my head against the glass and I'm watching him. I can't hear what he's saying. He's kind of making gestures and pointing back towards campus. And he's talking to Miss May. And I'm just watching him. Hurry it up. What is the deal? My mind is chattering away. And suddenly, into my right ear is a voice. And it says three words. That's the one. And I sat up. And I looked, of course, over my shoulder. There's no one there. What was that? That was the oddest thing. And then with that, the tall, lanky boy turns around, walks back towards campus. Miss May closes the door. Off we go home. Now, I thought about it on the way home because I thought it was so odd. But you go on about your day and your life. And then... Um, graduate eighth grade, and uh, my sister and I did not follow the other classmates to the local high school. We went away to a different high school. It was a, a small um, girls boarding school that had a religious aspect to it that my father really wanted us to go to. So she and I went away. So I was gone for four years. I had this overwhelming urge to instead go to the local community college. I walk into the cafeteria between classes to get a snack and a little something to drink. And lo and behold, sitting at one of the tables is the tall, lanky boy that used to ride my bus that was in my class at in junior high. And he decides, the tall, lanky boy decides that he wants to ask me on a date. So we went on on our first date. Um... We've been together ever since, 44 years ago. <laughs> we will celebrate our 38th uh, wedding anniversary uh, in November. And he is just the most incredible, wonderful, giving, generous, supportive husband you could ever imagine. I have a beautiful daughter uh, and two beautiful grandchildren now. And it wasn't until the day he proposed, not that voice, I hadn't thought about it, until... He asked me if I would meet him for lunch. He took me to this beautiful rose garden, got down on his knee and asked me if I would marry him. And it, and of course I said yes. And it was at that moment that that file opened up in my brain that said, oh my, that's the one. That's the voice I heard. That's the one. That was not the one and only time that she heard the voice. There was that time years later when she was driving. Still pretty young, though. She was throwing laundry in the car because she's going to do the laundry at, ha at the house. And she's going home, and she has to go kind of up and over this hill or small mountain, whatever you want to call it. And uh, off she went. Time for The Voice, part two. And um, it was already probably dusk at that time. Jumped in the car, and off I went. And I noticed as I was on the freeway before I was approaching the turnoff that leads into the mountainous area, into, into the foothills and up. My car was acting a little strange. It was like mm, giving these little jerks. And um, but I kept going forward, um, got through all the flatlands and the twisty turnies, and then up to the, uh, the foothills of the ridges of the mountain that um, I need to overtake and to make my way back down into the valley. And just as I'm approaching the foothills and making this climb up into the twists and turns, the car does it again, and it sort of jerks. Oh, I thought, and I thought, okay, I'll just get myself home. I'll just get myself home. And just as I got to the top of that gully and onto the flat surface, my entire engine just cuts out, and it's silent. And I am frantic. I grip the steering wheel. I'm waiting for the steering wheel to just to lock up, and or the headlights to go out, or even my front panel lights to go out. And it didn't. And I'm gripping the steering wheel and I, oh, dear God, I say, what, what do I do? What do I do? Now, 
there are maybe one to two turnouts and they are few and far between on that road. It's just a two lane with dro a drop off on one side that has a rail and then rocks and cliff on the on the left side. So there's very few options. And I'm thinking if I if I if my car comes to a stop, no telling there's going to be a speedy racer coming up from behind and not stop in time. What do I do? And by this time it was about 8:30 at night, so it's dark. And the voice right here very succinctly says, coast as far as you can go. Keep coasting. A coast, a coast, I'm gonna coast. It kept moving and then I thought to myself, there is a scenic viewpoint, right? It's two miles away. If I can get myself, I can pull off to that scenic viewpoint where there's parking. And just as I was approaching it, I'm getting ready to turn in when the voice says again, coast, keep coasting. And then I thought, yes. So off I go. I made it. I made it to the grade and now I'm on the grade and I'm going down the grade and my car is slowly losing momentum. Come on, come on. We can do it. We can do it. And to this day, I do not know how my car made it those two miles on the flat twists and turns and hairpin turns. And I was waiting for it to just I lose momentum any moment and I'd be stuck out there in the middle of nowhere, but it kept moving. And just as I approach, I get up to the gas station. It's about nine o'clock at this point. And I make that turn into the gas station silently, just as the attendant is coming out to shut everything down. He's shutting, he's out, shutting the pumps down, ready to turn the lights out. And here I come, coming up, boom, 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 boom and come to a stop silently right in front of him and the pump, the gas pumps. And he looks at me with this quizzical stare. And I looked at, and I rolled my window down. And I said, my car stalled back up. Do you know where that diner is? I said, I just coasted all the way down from the diner. And he looked at me and he was incredulous and he just couldn't believe it. And he said, well, let's get you pulled over here. We'll take a look at your car first thing in the morning. And um, I used, the, his phone there to call my mom who came and picked me up how many how many miles was that all told i want to say roughly 10 miles roughly coasting <laughs> coasting <laughs> and on flat ground yeah. i do not know how my car managed to maintain that momentum i'm still driving that road but not that car thanks lisa so uh, while we're here keep in mind we have Caught a wave here, catching a wave of miracle stories on our way with a surfer to the cliffs of Moer in Ireland. What happens up there? An encounter with God. Quick Patreon shout out. Thanks, Mike. Mike Messiak, a member of the Patreon family. Mike, a longtime uh, listener and supporter of what we do. Latest, uh, you know, we email each other now and then. Uh, latest uh, email says, I'll I have to do this by memory, blind guy. Okay, ready? <laughs> it's something like, I should have learned Braille, shouldn't I? Well, it says, um, Trapper, your podcast does a great work. I pray for continued success for you and Elizabeth. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that very much. If you'd like to join the Patreon family, because that's what keeps all this going, uh, you can come to uh, this episode 227 at touchbyheaven.net, click your way through, or go to patreon.com and search for Trapper Jack. Thank you so much for that. All right. Boom, 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 boom. The gas pumps. At a Southern California gas pump, what to do, what to do? Well, let's just travel back across the country to Philadelphia and Kimberly. I had no money for gas. It was crazy. I had no money. Kimberly has just such a joy and a love for God. And my father, he was a Baptist minister, um, you know, it's all the same to me. I felt Baptist, Christianity, Catholic. I went to St. Joe's University and got my master's and bachelor's from there. So, yeah, religion has always been around me um, my whole life. And I'm, like, really close to I, I want to be closer to God, and I love Jesus. So that will never waver. That will always be in me, you know, by my faith in acts, little acts, just makes it stronger, you know? Uh, so many little things that God has shown me 
acts and all and throughout my life there's been little acts like I know when God plays a hand in it because it goes so it just goes so smoothly and it just makes me so happy and so full of joy and I may not hear him but I see him I see it I see the things that occur but it was during my college year, I was struggling and I was, you know, living on my own and I had no money for gas. I was broke, broke. And I came walking out of my apartment and I was on my way to my job and I'm like, oh Lord, how am I going to get to work? You know, I'm up near E. I don't know how I'm going to get there. Um, and I'm walking out and it's like seven in the morning. And as I'm walking to my car, perfectly, perfectly on the ground, right like inches away from my car was a perfectly clean, it looked like a brand new $20 bill just laid there. And I'm looking around like, is this for me? Was this? <laughs> I'm like, is anyone out here? Did someone drop this? Like, is this for me? And there was my gas money. It Like, little things like that reminds me that uh, Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. You've always been there and you've never gone away. And I'm just grateful and thankful for that. Thanks, Kimberly. I'm picturing a pickpocketing angel right now. Just, you don't need this, do you? Boop. No, of course. It just, it just fell out. The $20 just fell out and there it was. Perfect. Let's connect the dots again with the surfer girl. That would be Janelle, 31 years old now. She's been surfing most of her life and just loves it. She's one of these people who just finds God in nature and in particular in surfing. 20 bucks, it's not 20 bucks for her. Um, you'd have to multiply the $20 just a few times over, a hundred times over, actually. I think it was about 2000 to get going, like just to get the ticket. We're back across the country again to San Diego and surfer Janelle. And I think, I think Janelle's the only Janelle I know. Are there any other Janelles? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I, I'm going to say a solid no, because when I Googled it before, um, I'm the only one there. And you're combining church and <laughs> surfing, basically. Yes, 100%. <laughs> like, I'm liking this idea. This yes. is great. I love this. Oh, we love this idea. This is like, this as, as believers, when you surf, I believe that being in nature, you know, God chooses how he wants to speak to you. And so this is like a Christian-based surf camp where they have a lot of young kids come in and we teach them how to surf. So kind of like a ministry outreach, outreach for um, young surfers. So the uh, his name was Brian and he comes up to me. He was the um, kind of the head of all of the outreach of Walking on Water. So Walking on so, Water? <laughs> yes, Walking what a on great Water. Name. I know. What a yeah, great ministry just, name. <laughs> walking on Water, you got a surfing. That's good. That's it good. makes so much sense. They did great videos. Um, they're like, hey, you know, we really love that you're back down here. I'd love for you to come on a uh, this Europe. We're taking a, a, a women's retreat um, to Europe on like a surf, a women's surf retreat, like outreach. So we're going through Scotland, England and Ireland. And I really think you should come. Yeah, that sounds great. But no way. Like I'm, I'm on my own path. I want to move back down to San Diego, get back out of my parents' house. Um, and also I just don't have the money. Like I'm not, this isn't something I'm interested in doing. And they're like, okay, well, we're going to pray about it. I'm like, okay, do your thing. But I'm just going to keep surfing. Like I'm not going to Europe with you. It was such a far out, you know, I was not interested, honestly. They're like, you know, it's really on my heart that you, that you come to this European, like come to Europe with us. And we're, you know, I'm like, you guys, you're le they Trapper, they're literally leaving. This is week two of the surf camp. They're leaving next week. And I'm just like, you guys, I'm not, I'm not going with you. I, I don't, I don't want to spend the money. I don't really have the money. We have all the instructors around. There's probably like four or five of us instructors. And Brian um, gives us a, like a little extra blessing of, you know, a hundred bucks or whatever it was. And, and one of the guys, his name was Connor, was such a stand up guy, but he goes, Janelle, I believe in you. And I really believe that God has a plan for you. And I'd like to um, like offer this hundred bucks to you. And, and he puts it down on the table and every other instructor puts their extra hundred bucks on the table that Brian had just given us from walk and wire. They put it on the table and right there, that was like 400 bucks. And he, they all put it down. They're like, I believe in you. And then it was a few minutes later, Brian's phone rings and he goes, Janelle, we have a donation of like almost a grand. So we have like 400 on the table right there at the burrito spot. 
another like another grand just came through the phone and we're laughing and I'm like starting to cry and Brian's praying and laughing and he's just like, God makes a way. Catherine calls me. We have all the money that you need to get to Europe. I have your ticket. And I like, I have chills even when I speak of it again, because it's just so awesome. All right. Has God given Janelle a sign that he wants her to come to Europe for this surfing retreat? You bet. Is it to surf? No. He has other plans up on the cliffs. I, I go. And I went with like one backpack on my back. So we get to Ireland and I'm thinking, great, the surf trip finally is going to begin. We're going to have a great time. And there was no waves whatsoever. A nice little beach spot for surfing. Zero waves. Absolutely no waves. The problem with this for me was that surfing was really my only way out. It was my, my only outlet. Um, something that I felt a lot of identity through. And just this is how the Lord and I just were like, I felt like we were buddies in the water. So they call it, they call it when you get skunked. So when you are looking for waves and you don't get any waves, you get skunked or it's just flat and blown out. So we had no waves. We didn't really get waves in England. We didn't get any in Ireland. And I'm just getting annoyed. I'm just like, Catherine, this is so annoying. I just want to surf. It's like, I don't get it. And she's like, Janelle, it's kind of not only about that. Like, I really think that you're missing what the Lord is trying to, you know, speak to you. And I'm like, yeah, well, it's okay because he's God and he can speak to me any other way, but I want to surf. And, and I did not get in the water one time in Ireland. And we're driving. We miss our turn to this next surf spot. And instead, we turn off and we see cliffs of Moher, like five kilometers or whatever it was, five kilometers this way. And I'm like, what is the cliffs of Moher? Like, I don't even understand. And she's like, are you kidding me? I've always wanted to come here. This is nowhere near the surf spot we were supposed to be. And I was like, what is this? Can we just go to the beach? Like, I just want to surf. And she's like, we need to stop here. Like, this is going to blow your mind. And the Cliffs of Aware are, I don't think it's one of the seven wonders of the of the world, but it's like, it's in just an incredible, you could Google it, the Cliffs of Moher. And we go there and we step out of the vehicle into these gorgeous green grasslands and we start walking. And I'm walking down this path and we like, go to the end of the cliffs and it's windy and like it's a little bit rainy but kind of the rainy where it's like majestic clouds and I look out and we we start walking and I just stop I mean it's a breathtaking view anyways but when I was so far away from anything I ever imagined it was nowhere near the beach no waves to be had like we're just on the cliffs on the edges of Ireland the next the next uh, land land that like you could hit was France. Like that was just, that's where we were. There was nothing to be seen except ocean and green cliffs. And I just stop and I start crying. And Catherine, we're all just kind of in awe. We're not near each other. So this is like a moment between me and God. And, and he just said, Janelle, do you see this ocean that you want to be in? And do you see how big it is and how vast it is? And I'm just taking it in. And I'm like, it's big and vast. And he says, I love you more than all of this combined and all of it that you can't see and all of it that you will never be able to comprehend. I love you this much and more. And he just took me to the edge of it. And I couldn't touch it, but I could, I could get a tiny, tiny glimpse of how big that was. And I hit my knees and I just, I just started crying. He just sat with me on the cliff. That was the first time where he introduced me to what that would really feel like, where he really was like, it's so much more than surfing. It's so much more than that. When I heard his voice, because I always hear you ask this, like, what does that sound like to you? And I asked myself that because it helps me discern that question that you ask is so relevant because it helps me discern what that sounds like for me and what God, how God speaks to me. And it's so different for everybody. And it's not always these crazy, extravagant experiences. It's just him just being there and showing up. And it just was a complete clear sentence in my own voice, but like in my head, like, Janelle, I love you more than all of this. And you're missing it. Like, I'm right here. I'm, I'm not letting you surf because I have to show you somehow that I don't come from the waves. I don't come from how good you surf or what you think that means for you. It's so much more than that. And 
that changed the course of my life forever because surfing was everything to me. So up to this point, you would say that surfing was in the center of your life. A hundred percent. Yeah. And God is saying, move that over a little. (laughs) A hundred percent. Couldn't have. That's exactly right. Trapper. A hundred percent. It was so big and it, yeah, I remember going back to Catherine and her, her relationship with God was far more mature. And she's the one that just kept saying, you're missing it, Janelle, you're missing it. Like, I believe there's more to this surf stuff. Like, we don't have to surf. I'm like, no, we do. So when I went over to Catherine and we, we met up again, just we were all walking within, you know, a few yards of each other. But I was like, this is big for me. And we were just kind of silent and changed. And we prayed together on the cliffs and I don't even remember our prayer, but we just took our quiet time. And I just was like, I, I heard him there, you know, and that was, that was a pivotal moment for me. Um, just with, just with how he was chasing me and I was just going so far, you know, I was doing anything else, but wanting to go. And he wanted to take me and use his, use his community and his, uh, his kingdom and send me to the cliffs of Ireland to tell me that. And like, it, I, how did you want to choose me to give me that gift? Like, how am I worthy of that kind of communication and that kind of gift? Let's pause this story for just a moment here as we are up here taking in the view of what Janelle sees, what God has created, okay? First, you have Janelle, and what is that, to, as she said, what, what is her identity? What's at the center of her life? Surfing. Is God there? Yeah, but surfing is what takes her there. So surfing is in the middle. That is her identity, okay? And God says, no, you're missing it. Like Catherine had said, no, 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 you're missing it. Look here, I I created all this. As you see these cliffs, uh, the coastline, the cliffs, the clouds, uh, uh, the spectacular view I created, but compared to the love I have for you, it's just stuff. I mean, sit in that for a second. He's, he's looking at all this. She's looking at all this. It's, it is spectacular. As she said, it should be one of the wonders of the world. And, and God is saying, it's just stuff compared to how much I love you. I mean, just sit in that for a second. Do we even believe that? Our actual identity is that we are a beloved daughter or son of the Father, him who created everything as, as, right there at the baptism of Jesus. He said it. He looked down at Jesus and he said, uh, this is my beloved son. And at your baptism and my baptism, that was kind of it right there for us as well. And maybe you haven't even been baptized yet. I don't know. But he is saying to you, he is offering to you, he is saying, you are my beloved son, my beloved daughter. And all of this, this beautiful, incredible, spectacular creation is nothing compared to how much I love you. And I want to share all of this with you. Just put me in the middle, because if you put me in the middle, then you'll see that everything else comes from me. Look at the prodigal son story. Remember the the young son went off the rebellion and all that. But the older son is the one I want you to look at at this time. The older one who gets a little honked off that when the younger one comes back after throwing away the inheritance, he gets all this, he gets the robe, he gets the fatted calf, and the older one's a little ticked off. And the father looks at him and says, don't you get this? (laughs) You're missing it. Everything that is mine is yours. Because you are my son, it's yours. I share all of this with you. And every single one of us at some time in our lives or currently have put something else in the middle. Might be your work, might be a person, might be a thing, it might be money, it might fill in the blank. We put other things other than God in the middle and it ruins all the priorities because when we put God in the middle then everything else comes from him and our priorities are straight. So Janelle has been knocked to her feet. She suddenly has a new perspective. It's changed her life to the point where now, as I speak to you now, she's got another challenge. Eh, She used to be a flight attendant for five years. Eh, It wasn't her calling. Her mom was one once and uh, she thought, well, I can do that. And she did, but nope, that's not not it. So right now she, she left that And now she's waiting for the next thing. And because God is now in the middle at the center of everything and not surfing, which she still loves, but now that God is at the center, her whole perspective of where she is in her life has changed. To follow God, it doesn't look, it doesn't look that normal. 
yeah. it doesn't really look always like in like um the safe choice it's quite hard actually so how many years were you a flight attendant uh five in all you've been waiting several months now for a for a voice the voice mm. the nudge the something that says that direction right and it's a yes. tough place to be isn't it it's so humbling and it's so tough and um it, it's quite exiling but but it doesn't have to be when you choose to walk with the lord it looks entirely different than would make sense to anyone else and it's more worth it to go in that direction than try to explain it and make a fool it's just like i know god's got a way and i'm going to keep working and taking these odd end jobs and i am so excited to be confused and to keep choosing him because at the end of that i i just want him to say well done good and faithful servant did you did you hear what you just said <laughs> yeah i am so excited to be so confused <laughs> yeah i truly mean that and and I remember you you don't you don't like it, but he's got a big teddy bear behind his back, and he wants to trade in the little toy that we have for that big toy, that big teddy bear behind him. And he's just like, <laughs> I have something better for you. The fact that he chooses certain people like myself or to go through those kind of things, it's like, and that's what he taught me when it, when I went abroad. He's like, I'm I'm here, and you can choose me or not, but. Um, I'm choosing you and I love you bigger than the whole ocean. And I can't, it, you'll never understand, but it's bigger than all of this. I think that's what makes me excited because it, it takes me back to that place where I never have felt more love. So, you know, and I'm lucky to have friends and family and um, that support that, but it is a bit of a process that. Yeah. It's you got any go hints? Through. Are there any hints? <laughs> that's what a great, what a great question. Um, wow. Oh, now you're going to flip my day upside down looking for him. You know what? And I think that's such a good reminder, Trapper, because we go so fast through these confusing times, even though I might be able to find uh, joy in that. But we go so fast trying to also get out of it because it's uncomfortable what it might look like or what I might have to tell my neighbor that asked me about this job I don't have anymore. But in the middle of it, God's like... I'm I'm right here. I'm with you. And it doesn't matter what it looks like because I have something so much bigger. And if we just keep putting like one foot in front of the other, like right now I'm nannying and I love working with kids. I do have a heart for young kids and education, but um, it's kind of like that healing method of like, you can't go to that next place until you figure out what God's telling you here in the present, because you can't go there without understanding what he's doing here right now. Yeah, he's so, doing something in this moment. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So that's where we are. And, and the hints is just one one little um, step of faith at a time. And I think it's to be uncomfortable with with uh, with what this feels like and Boy. stuff like that. God bless you. We're all praying for you. Honest to gosh, everybody's just sending prayers to your, your way right now. I appreciate, I appreciate everything you do in the prayers and being able to talk about it. And I, it took me... It took me a while to want to share it, but I, all that I've been wanting to do is share what God does and listening to your podcast and just being a, listening to other people say what you do, what you do. But Trapper, it really is such a blessing to everybody. And my prayer is just that they keep, whoever listens just keeps hearing these gorgeous stories of God just surrounding us. And I know that he's here and I hope to um, be able to connect in a few years or whenever God's timing is and just say, look what he's done. It's going to be sooner <laughs> than that. Amen. What's our takeaway, Miss Janelle? <laughs> oh, man. Because you know that's another one of those questions I always ask. I knew it. I knew it, too. Um, we just have to keep moving forward with faith, even, even when it's just so confusing. We're just plucked. We're, we're, we're put here for that for a certain time, and I just want to honor that. I don't want to make decisions that are so out of the will that creates havoc. Like I've done that before way too many times. And he took me to Ireland to tell me, let's get back on track. You, my little sheep, let's go back, <laughs> you know, but I just want to keep moving forward. And he's, he's done it before and he's going to do it again. And he's, he's here. He's totally here. God bless you. You are, um, you're an inspiration. <laughs> Trapper, you are as well. Thank you so much for the time and for, um, for everything you do. Wow. Okay. What a wave. Catching a wave amidst all the millions of waves that come crashing upon our shores every day. Still so poetic, Trapper. Thank you. 
All right, what's your story? Get a hold of me here at touchedbyheaven.net. Thanks for the Patreon help, patreon.com. Search for Trapper Jack or come here to episode 227. Hey, thanks for keeping us a five-star podcast with your ratings and reviews in your podcast app. And I will see you next week here at Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. I'm Trapper Jack saying bye-bye. How were you at your bye-byes? <laughs> um, I'm, it's pretty good. It, it becomes... <laughs> Very robotic at the end of at the end of flights, but <laughs> it's bye bye. crazy. Yeah, bye bye. bye, -bye. Yeah. <laughs>